The next major topic of our discussion is Boolean algebra. So you, you have heard of uh, arithmetic algebra um, in high school, in middle school, uh, for some of you even in elementary school. Uh, you have, so you have seen a lot of arithmetic algebra. Now we are going to transition that into Boolean algebra. The difference is going to be that the variables that are involved are going to be Boolean in nature. So they are going to have only two possibilities, low and high, zero and one. Uh, the algebra that we are going to consider is going to be of logical operations instead of arithmetic operations. So that's one key difference between uh, arithmetic algebra and Boolean algebra. Some of the rules that you have uh, learnt in arithmetic algebra might apply even in Boolean algebra, but that's just by coincidence. Um, you should expect that the, the rules are going to be different in general. So um, in this uh, lecture, we are going to be establishing all those rules or laws, Boolean algebra properties. Before we do that, let us just recap quickly uh, a couple of different logic gates and how many different unique functions can you have in the case of a two input gate. So consider a two input gate. Let us suppose you have, um, so I'll just add a gate here, add a page here. So let's say we have one gate some logic gate. A two input logic gate. And say we have an output one, right? F, we have X and Y. So for the input case, you may have the case zero, 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 one, one, zero, one, one. So four different possibilities that could happen at the input side. So let me just highlight those one, two, three, and four. Right. Four different possibilities. For each of those four different possibilities, you might get four different entities at the output. So you get one here, two here, three here, four here. Right. So if there are four, four uh, outputs, four different outputs that are possible because there are four input conditions. How many different unique possibilities can be there for the output itself? Because the output can be 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, all the way to 1, 1, 1, 1. So you can have 16 possible combinations for that particular output F when you have two inputs X and Y that particular logic is being captured into a really uh, wide truth table over here. So we are considering X and Y as our two inputs in the two columns that are all the way to the left of this truth table, followed by outputs F0, F1, all the way to F15. Each of those outputs corresponding to one unique possibility of the output. So from F0, which is 0, 0, 0, 0, to F15, 1, 1, 1, 1. Now, for each of these outputs, you can express F0 in terms of X and Y, F1 in terms of X and Y, F10 in terms of X and Y, F15 in terms of X and Y. You can represent all of them in terms of the inputs X and Y. That's combinational logic expression. Some of them, it could happen that they are not at all dependent on X or Y. So for example, if you look at uh, F0, no matter what X and Y are, it is zero, which means F0 is zero. So you would write the logic expression for F0 as simply zero. And then for F1, we know that this is an expression for AND gate, you would say F, one equals x and y. Similarly, you have f2, 
F2 was asked just now in your quiz, F2 is what? X and Y complement, for example. Why is that coming from? It is coming from the fact that there is one one over here, which happens when X is one and Y is zero, which is why X is one here, Y is made one by complementing it. Um, similarly, you have F3, which is exactly the same as the column X. So F3 is X and we can keep going all the way down to F15. Now there are a couple of them that are highlighted over here. For example, F8 and F14. Let us just uh, try to uh, look at those two a little bit more carefully. F8, which is 1, 0, 0, 0, that has been captured into a table over here. X is uh, X and Y are the two inputs, Z is the output. And if we uh, analyze this a little bit more closely, this is simply a NOR gate because that is the truth table of a NOR gate. And for the, for, for the sake of expression, how can you, so the symbol is that, and in terms of expression, what can we say about Z? We can say it is X complement and Y complement. That is the only time Z is one. And because it matches the properties of the NOR gate, it turns out that you can also write this same logic expression as X nor Y. You are the variables first and then you complement the result, you get nor. This is actually a law that we are going to take a look at in a little bit more detail later on. This is called De Morgan's law. Um, but the, the point over here is logic expressions are not unique. You can have multiple logic expressions. Some might be simple, some might be complemented, some might be in one form or the other. They are not unique. All right, let's do the same exercise for F14. F14 is captured in the truth table over here. And in this case, you can write the logic expression for Z. If we just use the NAND property, because it is NAND, you can say X NAND Y. And if we write it for each one in the truth table, we can write the same thing as X complement and Y complement or X complement or Y or X and Y complement. Three terms that are corresponding to, so that's one, that's two, and that's three. And later on, when we are looking at the log Boolean algebra properties and certain proofs, you will see that you can simplify this expression at the bottom, the second form, you can simplify that expression to get the NAND function. So there is simplification that is possible here. More about that as we are proving the properties. Let us move forward. So we looked at this and let's now look at two more logic functions. Give it, I, I'll give it just a couple of seconds here. All right. So let's take a look at two more logic functions in exclusive or and exclusive nor. Exclusive or, the symbol is over here. There is an or gate, but there is also an arc, one more arc in front of the, the gate that is exclusive or, or simply XOR. The symbol for that is a P 
plus sign with a circle around it. So you have the nor, but there is a circle around it which indicates exclusivity. It is used for looking at whether the inputs are different or same. So exclusive or is a inequality detector, meaning when the inputs are different, the output is a 1. Exclusive or nor, which is simply x exclusive or y complement the entire thing. The symbol for that is exclusive or followed by a bubble. And for the truth table, it is the equality detector. As you can see, it is 1 when both the inputs are 1. And both these functions are complements for of each other. And you can quickly make that deduction by looking at their truth tables. Wherever there is a 0 is replaced with a 1 and wherever there is a 1 replaced with a 0 to go from exclusive OR to exclusive NOR and also the other way around. So they are complements of each other looking at the truth table. And you can be hinted about that by looking at the the symbols of those logic gates. The difference between the symbols of NOR and uh, OR to exclusive OR and exclusive NOR is this particular arc, right? That, that additional arc is the addition here. So it looks very uh, similar, but it is exclusive. And if you can see here, for if we just had x or y, you would have got 0, 1, 1, 1 as the output. So the only difference is the last entry because it is exclusive. So when both are true, it will give you false. So z is x exclusive or y. All right, I hope that is helpful. Uh, we will take a look at more manipulations between exclusive OR and exclusive NOR uh, later on. Now, here is uh, another way of observing this, uh, another way of using this. We designed a 2-bit comparator a week ago. The 2-bit comparator uh, was comparing bits, whether they are the same or not. So we could have used exclusive OR and exclusive NOR operations to check that. So we could have uh, implemented the 2-bit comparator using these two logic gates as well. And we'll talk more about that when we design uh, a bit more complicated comparators. So if, for example, a 4-bit comparator, when we design that, we'll take a look at using exclusive OR and exclusive NOR. Now, coming to the, the core of the lecture today, Boolean algebra laws and theorems. What, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through the list of uh, properties. They are numbered 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and there are, they are more on the next few slides. And there is also a 1D, 2D, 3D, and so on. The D indicates the dual. So there's a D there, D there, D there. Those all indicate the dual of 1, the dual of property 2, the dual of property 3, and so on. The first um, definition, the, the first law is the duality principle. And the duality principle says that the dual of a Boolean equation or a Boolean expression is derived by replacing AND operations with ORs, ORs with ANDs, zeros with ONES, and ONES with zeros. So if you replace AND with OR, OR with AND, zero with one, one and zero, however, you have to leave the literals unchanged. As you can see here, uh, you have left the literals unchanged. You have left 
the literal x literal is a variable unchanged so you don't do x complement you leave it as is however you 0 to a 1 or to an and so if you start with 1 you go to 1d by changing ors to ands ands to ors zeros to ones ones to zeros while leaving the literals unchanged that is called the dual of a boolean expression so you will have an expression and you will have a du uh, dual of that expression now there is a principle of duality that we are going to leverage the principle of duality says that if you start out with a valid expression say one and say you have proved one then the dual of that expression is also going to be valid so if you prove one it is like you have also proved 1d so if the if if the original boolean expression is valid is true then the dual of that is also true that is the principle of duality so using that duality we are essentially able to write 1d 2d 3d 5d there is no 4d because the the 4 one is double negation uh, and there, is, there are no operates, operators or pluses or ands to flip to zeros. Uh, fl flip. There are no zeros, there are no ones. So there is just involution law. All right. What we'll do next is go through this list of properties. Some of these properties are going to be very similar to uh, an arithmetic algebra property. Like, for example, if you look at one, x plus 0 is x very similar to so exactly the same as what we learnt in uh, arithmetic algebra so if you add a 0 the value of the uh, va uh, variable doesn't change right however if you look at this x plus x is x well we learnt x plus x is 2x right that was for arithmetic algebra not the case here over here it is going to be considered as a logical or operation instead of an addition operation all right so let's go through the list and prove one after the other i'm going to keep adding a page and i'll keep proving it so property number one is x or zero is x now I'm going to, before I do this, I will uh, write one more thing here. The, the, the thing that I'm going to write is various ways, ways to prove Boolean algebra properties. The first way is to use perfect induction. or truth table this method is probably the simplest method because it will essentially substitute zeros and ones all the possibilities of zeros and ones for all the variables and evaluate the left hand side evaluate the right hand side for all those combinations and try to match them up so it's called the truth table method or the perfect induction method of proving a Boolean algebra property. Second, using Venn diagrams. Also, pretty easy because it's a graphical method uh, that some of you might have learnt in set theory. We'll take a look at uh, that as well and Venn diagrams are particularly useful in Boolean algebra uh, because of 
the fact that you either shade a region or leave the region unshaded. Uh, so that, that has a binary aspect to it that is inbuilt. And we are also working in variables that are binary in, uh, in state, 0 and 1. So it works out very well. Now the third way to prove a Boolean algebra property is to use other Boolean algebra properties. So if suppose I am uh, proving property 10, I may use property 7, for example, because I've already proved it. So the, the, the things that you have already proven, you can use that to prove other Boolean properties. So one of these three ways, and I will be trying to use, uh, I, I will use different ways for different properties so that you can uh, get an essence of all the three uh, options that you have. All right, so let's start with the first property that we are trying to prove. X or zero is X. Notice over here, this is or operation and this is a logic zero. And X is a binary variable or Boolean variable. So let's do the proof. If X is a binary variable, let's evaluate the left hand side. X or zero. Well, X is a binary variable, so it could have a value of zero or it could have a value of one. Plus remains as is, zero remains as is. So if I evaluate my left hand side, what do I have? Zero or zero. False or false is false. And true or false is true. Now if you can see this, this is exactly the same as so if you compare the this particular column and that, what do you have? This is x, which is right hand side. So x plus 0 is x. We have proved that by substituting the two values of 0 and 1. And we have evaluated the uh, result. To be 0 and 1 which is x the same as x so we have proved it by using perfect induction the the method that we used is perfect induction here and because we have proved one we have also proved 1d based on principle of duality but just in case let's let's do it again 1d what is 1d 1d is x remains as is plus becomes and 0 becomes 1 equals x right that's the property to prove this what is x and 1 let's use the same um, perfect induction method you have x and 1 x can be 0 x can be 1 and it with 1 and 1. 0 and 1 is 0. 1 and 1 is 1. This is the same as that. This is x. This is also x. This is my right hand side. I started with my left hand side here. All right, I hope uh, these two quick proofs are um, okay. Let us move forward. Add one more slide here. Let's see. Uh, property two, 
is x or 1 is x the proof for that quickly this can be 0 or 1 x can be either a 0 or a 1 when x is a 0 or 1 what do you get left hand side when x is a 0 Sorry, this is x plus 1 is not x, it's just 1. What else? Uh, and when x equals 1, x plus 1 equals 1 plus 1 equals 1. So when I'm saying plus, what I really mean is a logical OR operation. So, even though we have X here, our right hand side is independent of X. It is simply one. Two D. X remains as is plus becomes and z one becomes zero one becomes zero again we can use the same methodology here what i'm going to do is i will just simply copy this paste it over here and let's see i'm going to make edits to this this will change, this will change, this will change. When x is 0, x and 0, x and 0, 0 and 0, 1 and 0, 0 and 0 is 0, 1 and 0 is 0. It's independent of x, which is the right hand side. let's add another page after so far all we have been using is perfect induction method let's do third the third property is the idempotent law which is uh, x or x is x so i'll try to prove this in slightly different way uh, let's say I prove it using uh, still a truth table, but I'll I, I'll uh, you you can picture it in a different way. Say I'll have a, a a column for x and a column for x or x. Now we know that x can be either a zero or a one. It's binary variable. So X or X should be what? 0 or 0, which is 0. 1 or 1, which is 1. So we can see that this matches that. So still we are using the same um, perfect induction or the truth table method to prove this. 3D. Uh, which is the idempotent law, uh, but the dual of that. So X and X is X. I will leave the proof of this uh, to you. Um, I don't think that you guys uh, need to do uh, 
this again but you can also be prove this you can you can prove this using perfect induction again similar proof to three right just form a table plug in the values of zero and one for x evaluate both the left and the right hand side and try to match them up if they match for all the possibilities then it is proved let's move on to property number four which is the involution property you don't need to remember the names uh, you just need to uh, understand the property x complement complemented is x other notation which i am comfortable with is instead of writing a prime let's write a bar over it so x double bar is x that's the that's the involution law which essentially means double negation, right? Yeah. Double negation cancels out. So if x is zero, x complement is, well, let's do this x is 0 implies x complement is 1 implies x double complement is 0. Same as that. Sorry. x is 1, x complement is 0 x double complement is 1 and now if you take a look at these two columns they match up exactly so it's just double negation 0 becomes a 1 1 become back goes back to 0 so that's property number four. Let's add another page here for property number five, which is x or x complement is one. Uh, let's do this using Venn diagrams. So for one diagrams, what do I have? Let's have uh, two sides to this. I will have left hand side over here and I will have right hand side over here. How do I express uh, a Venn diagram? Well, I start with the universal set. So I will draw a slightly big box. That's my universal set indicated by epsilon the the universal set symbol then so that's like everything in the universe is in that box similarly on the right hand side also i will draw the same thing that's everything On the left hand side, I need a variable x. So I will draw a red circle indicating x. Similarly, I will also draw a red circle here indicating x. So in that particular, yeah, so uh, I learned it using epsilon, but omega is fine as well. Uh, what I mean to say, it's it's the uh, universal set.
So now if you look at the left hand side, what do we need? We need X, we need X complement as well. So I'm going to use this. I'm going to use the strategy that, let's see here, for Venn diagrams, I'm going to say there are two options, shade and unshaded. I'm going to shade when things are true and unshaded is false. So where is X? X is true inside the space. Where is X complement? X complement means the, the complement is what? Everything outside, right? So when you do the complement, you are looking at everything but X. So what would that be? Let us shade that in blue. So that would be right here. Now when you do the union, this plus sign is the symbol of union. What would that be for the left hand side? That would simply be all the region in the pink plus add that up to all the region in blue. So that will be the universal set here on the left side. On the right side, you simply have one. What is that? That is everything in that. So clearly, as you can see, Everything that is shaded on the left is everything that is shaded on the right. That's how we, we can prove this using a Venn diagram. All right, questions about uh, proving things at least with one variable using Venn diagrams. So when you have R, that indicates union. Uh, symbol sometimes you might see of a U. In set theory, you will see a symbol of U um, for plus, which is the R operation. The AND is the intersection. which is indicated by an inverted U, which is the AND operation. We will prove uh, at least one more property using Venn diagrams, uh, which involves maybe two or maybe even three variables. <clears throat> Let's keep moving. Uh, five is done. Uh, 5D the property is X and X complement is 0 well this is simple to prove right there can be only two possibilities 0 or 1 or 1 and 0 
and in both cases at least one of them is a zero because of that it is the output is going to be a zero so this is my x this is my x complement and last column will be zero irrespective because one of them will be false by design property number six commutative law x or y is the same as y or x let's quickly prove this well I will try to use the Venn diagrams. I would need, so I'm using this for my left hand side. Uh, let's see, and then this is for my right hand side. Uh, say I have one and two, those are my X and Y. That's my X, that's my Y x y x y on the left hand side i need to do x union y okay x union y would be everything inside this that is x and that completes y on the right hand side oh i need to do first y right so, okay, first y, y or x. Exactly matches up. So true. Again, other things, uh, you can also use perfect induction or the truth table method to prove this. Shouldn't be too difficult. If you guys see me uh, moving through these a little bit faster than you would like me to move, please stop me and we can revisit those properties. X and Y is the same as Y and X. Commutative law for AND operation. So it doesn't matter what you do AND with what. X and Y is the same as Y and X. The order doesn't matter. Again, this can be proved with, uh, actually, let's just prove this quickly with this because it doesn't take much time. Now, because I'm going for intersection, I'm doing the and here, I'm doing the intersection. When I do the intersection, I will have to shade only this region here. Maybe that's too big, it's right there. That's my intersection between X and Y. And if I do that for right hand side, Y and X, it is the same intersection area there between X and Y. So they match up exactly the same. Uh, you know, one thing that I would like to quickly uh, clarify is this. When you have two variables, x comma y, how many possibilities are there in x and y? Well, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1, right? So there should be four possibilities between two binary variables. Possible, uh, where are those four possibilities indicated they should so that means that there should be four fragments in the Venn diagram. Let's number them. One, two, three. Oh, hold on. What? Four. Right. So those four are exactly matching the four fragments over there. Let us go back here. 
I just wanted to point that out that four possibilities between two variables should be captured with four fragments in the Venn diagram. Only then we can say, okay, it's a one-to-one -one mapping. Uh, let's see, X and Y, Y and X, we've proved that. Let's move on with seven. Seven is associative law, associative This is uh, X or Y or Z is the same as X or Y or Z, which is the same as X or Y or Z. So if you do X or Y first or Y or X, Y or Z first or X or Z first, it doesn't matter. Our operation is associative. How can I prove this? I can prove this by simply uh, going with X, uh, Y, Z. I can have one column for X plus Y. Then I can have a column for X plus Y or Z. Then I can have a column for Y or Z. Then I can have a column for X or Y or Z. Let's quickly fill this up. Zero, one, zero, one, zero, one, zero, one. I'm using the truth table method to prove this. Next, zero, zero, one, one, zero, zero, one, one. I have four zeros next, four ones after that. X or Y. So for X or Y, I only need X to be a one or Y to be a one. X is one over here, 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 and here. Y is one here and here. All right, so that's it. Everything else should be a zero. The last one is X or Y or Z. I need to R with Z. So the only thing that changes to a one is the second one. Everything else will be a one there. Only the first one is a zero. Similarly, if you evaluate Y or Z, I have zero, one, 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 zero, one, one, one. Then I add, uh, do that with X or with X, then I flip that one more to a one. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. All right, and if you match up things, this guy is the same as this guy. So it, our operation is associative. Doesn't matter which order you are things in. Um, similarly, you have a 7D. So 7D is the bool, uh, dual of seven which is X and Y ended with Z is the same as X and Y and Z, which is the same as X, Y, Z. Similar proof to seven. You can do it using uh, Venn diagrams as well, where you are evaluating intersection between all those three sets, uh, three variables. So three circles you can use to represent that. Uh, let's see. Distributive law. So I have X and it with y or z so this is like foil
so this actually um, I think we can use Venn diagrams very well for this particular proof distributive law uh, and you know if you if you compare this with uh, arithmetic algebra it is uh, kind of the same so what I'll do is I'll quickly try to add up some uh, left hand side I have this uh oh left hand side and this is my right hand side I have three circles here and I've got X there, Y there and Z there, X there, Y there and Z there, everything else is the universal set and I will use this for left hand side then I'll use this for right hand side. So for left hand side, I need to first find the union between Y and Z. And I will sketch the union between Y and Z with blue. What is that going to be? Sketch Y and Z union. Y is here. And uh -oh. Z is here. All right, so that's Y or Z. Next, I'm going to and it, meaning intersection, intersection with X. Where is it intersecting with X? Let us just shade that part. That's it. So wherever you see the blue shade as well as the red stripes, that's left hand side. How about the right hand side? Let's do X and Y with say pink. Where is that going to be? It is the intersection between X and Y. So it should be right here, X and Y intersection. Then X and Z. X and Z, let us do it in maybe yellow. Intersection between that and that. And I can simply add on to this because it is or so I'm just adding up clearly if you can see now the shaded part on the right hand side is exactly the shaded and striped part on the left hand side that's how we prove it um, also when you move to a three variable property you are essentially evaluating eight different combinations between x y and z so there should be eight fragments uh, in the in the Venn diagram. Let us just uh, number those. And this is not in a particular order. I'm just numbering them. Done. There should be eight fragments and they are there. Okay, um, question so far, let, let me take a, a step back. We have uh, gone through eight uh, properties so far. How are we doing? So if this is a little bit boring uh, for you, um, you are not alone. Uh, so if uh, we were doing this in class I wouldn't be too surprised if you guys some of you actually 
fell asleep. Boolean algebra, as far as I am doing the proofs, it tends to be boring. But then once you uh, start applying these to problems, that's when it becomes a little bit more interesting. Uh, let's see. Can you explain how each region represents each possibility? Absolutely, yes. That's a very good question. Um, so let me try to sketch this. Uh, let's see. Uh, you know what? I will take this guy from here. And I will add a, another slide and I will paste it. And what I'll do is I will remove this. It doesn't have any significance here. I will also remove these things. And then I will start uh, talking about what that is, right? So for example, let's see. When you have three variables, X, Y, and Z, then you essentially have eight combinations which can be expressed as this x complement and y complement and z complement x complement and y complement and z x complement and y and z complement x complement let's see what is that x hmm? y z And those are all the possibilities. Now, those uh, eight possibilities, I should be able to map them to each of those areas, right? So let's see, this is say, I will mark this as 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7. Where would 0 go? Outside x, intersection with outside y, intersection with outside z. That would be right here. Where would 7 go? 7 is x intersection with y intersection with z. That would go right there. 6. 6 is x intersection with y intersection with z complement. So that is x intersection with y intersection with z complement. That would be 6 right there. Uh, let's see. x intersection with z intersection with y complement so that is 5 right there um, x is 1 y complement z complement so that's which is 4 so x how about the 3 3 is x and y x complement that's 3 uh, how about 2? Two? 2 is y. How about 1? That's it. 0 all the way to 7. So all of those are 8 possibilities. So I hope that answered the question there. Uh, no problem. So, you know, if, if we were in class, I would uh, crack a few jokes and kind of uh, make the class a little bit more lively, but it's a little bit difficult to do that uh, online. Uh, but, you know, it, I just want to point out that this is not the entire course. Uh, this is one specific part of Boolean algebra, which tends to be a little bit of a drag. Uh, so just bear with the properties and after that you get to use them which is uh, more fun thank you for your comment kevin
all right let's uh, keep going we talked about eight we talked about labeling the the pieces let us keep moving here add another page and let's see uh, 8d is x or y and z is x or y and x or z again i will just leave the property over here um, i'm very sure that either with the well actually let's just do this uh, using let's prove this using boolean algebra using other boolean algebra properties so what do we have here let's start with the right hand side note for these proofs you can start with the left hand side and then go to the right hand side or you can do the other way in this particular case um, i am more comfortable starting with the right hand side because i can distribute things and then i can simplify to go to the left hand side um, one way might be straightforward and the other way might need you to be a little bit more creative so it depends on really uh, what your uh, preference is Re right to left in this particular property is a little bit more straightforward let's see right hand side is what x or y ended with x or z if i use foil i can write this as x and x or x and z or y and x or y and z i've used a property what is that let's see if x and x is x is 3d so that's 3d How about x or z? X and z. I can't do much about x and z. I leave that as is. Uh, how about y and x is the same as x and y? I have proved that in 6D. And the last one stays as is. Next step is to notice that there is a X there, there is a X there, there is a X there. In the first three terms, there is a X, the binary variable X. So I can pull out that common term. I've got one or Z or Y or Y and Z remains as is. This guy remains as is. Next, I observe that one or anything is one, which is essentially property number two. This will result in x and 1 or y and z, which is the same as x or y and z, which is the right hand side. Uh, I've gone from x and 1 to x using 1D. So this is how we prove things prove other things using previously proved boolean properties questions about proof of hd using other boolean algebra properties now over here just for your for the sake of your understanding i have um written out each of the properties 
in some cases you might be asked to cite the property but in most cases um, I'm not going to require you to cite the property uh, so it really depends on the context of the problem so when you read the problem uh, description please read it carefully my goal is not for you to understand uh, sorry not understand uh, by heart the the names of the property I just want you to be able to use them uh, with comfort with a lot of comfort the same way that you use your uh, arithmetic algebra properties all right let's keep moving in the right direction here let's that's eight I'm going to add one more page here say this is what after a we did eight or eight D we did eight D after eight D we have nine for property 9, I have x and y or x and y complement and the property says it is x. This is very easy to, to see. Um, so there's a question which uh, on, on the chat box, uh, for all these laws, you we don't need to prove them when using them if the question doesn't ask you. Uh, yes, you don't need to prove them uh, as you are using them unless asked. You are absolutely right. So X and Y uh, or X and Y complement is X, right? So again, in this case, it is easier for me to start with the left hand side and then simplify or manipulate to go to the right hand side. So I'll do that. Left hand side is simply X and Y or X and Y complement. I, un I, I observe that there is a X which is common to the two terms. So I can pull that out. I'm left with Y or Y complement which is one, which is the right hand side. So I have used a few properties over here um, to do this. Let's do 9D right there I have X or Y ended with X or Y complement and the property says it should equal X again let's start with the left hand side I have X or Y ended with X or Y complement which equals, if I use distributive law, use the FOIL property, I have X and X or X and Y complement or Y and X or Y and Y complement. X and X is X, X and Y complement, I can't do much. Y and X, I can write as X and Y. Y and Y complement goes to zero. From the first three terms, I can pull out an X one or y complement or y x and one x right hand side questions about nine and nine d Now, so far, we have been very, uh, things have gone on smooth. As we go on to the next couple of properties, you are going to see that 
things are not as straightforward and you might need to use a few more tricks. So it's better to have them up your sleeve. So let me talk about property 10 here. This is x or xy, which is x. Similarly, on the on the other side, ah, come on. I have ten d, which is x, ended with x or y, which is also x. So how do I prove uh, this? Let's see, I start with left hand side. I have X or XY. I can pull out an X, one or Y, X and one, X right hand side. Very, very straightforward. How about 10D? Let's start with left hand side, x and x or x and y, do the foil first, then x and x, x and y, hmm? is this this? x and x, x and y, right? So this one is x and x, y. This is it. This is, and then how about this? This one will go back to x. The way we have gone from this to this step is by using property number 10. The proof is right there. All right, questions about 10 and 10 D. Okay, now let's talk about 11. Add a page here. Um, X or Y complement ended with Y is X and Y. Start with left hand side because it's simpler. Use distributive law X and Y y complement and y, x and y, 0, x and y, which is the right hand side. That's done. Now, for 11D, this is actually my favorite property because it's, it's not very straightforward to see this. Uh, X and Y complement or Y is X or Y. So that's the property. Um, I would encourage you guys to follow along with this proof because there are going to be a couple of tricks that I'm going to uh, introduce you to which are very, very helpful. Not just for now, but those kind of skills you can use for other ex, uh, other problems as well. So let's do this. Uh, let's start with the left-hand side because it that looks uh, a little bit more manageable. Right-hand side, you can't do much about that because simply X or Y. So in the left-hand side, I have what? X and Y complement or Y. Now, if you, if you notice here, 
there are nothing there is nothing that you that is common like no term or no literal that is common to both these term, terms um, i cannot factor out something uh, i cannot combine something so I, th there's nothing for me to do so i'm going to have to be a little bit more creative in my journey from left hand side to the right hand side so here is one trick that you can use this problem has two variables the two variables are x and y there are two terms that you are observing right now the one term is x and y complement and the other term is y the first term has both x and y represented the second term only has y that is represented so what i'm going to do is i'm going to force the missing literal force missing literal how do i do that well it's something like multiply and divide by two uh, or add and subtract five right you have you have you have you guys have done those kind of tricks in uh, arithmetic algebra all the time right so you manipulate without changing the uh, logic or without changing the value of the expression you try to use those tricks to manipulate in the same way we'll do this we will keep x and y complement as is but for y we will force the missing literal so what we will do is we will force x on to that by ending y with x or x complement we know that x or x complement is simply one so it 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 is it's it's not changing the value so that's my left hand side so if if i expand it what do i have i have x and y complement or x and y or x complement and y i'm going to use another trick here the thing that i'm going to do is i'm going to do duplicate some terms so that i can combine more duplicate terms to combine more and the the term that i'm going to choose to duplicate is this why can i duplicate because x or x is x so if i write x and y one time or two times or 10 times it is the same so i'm going to write x and y complement as is i'm going to say x and y x and y x complement and y so i've essentially duplicated in the same term twice then here is the end here i'm going to combine these two and i'm going to combine these two when i combine the left two i can pull out a common x i get y complement or y from here i get a y that is common to both of them and i can get a x or x complement there there's a plus in the middle this will go to one this will also go to one so i have x or y which is the right hand side so hopefully you saw the use of two tricks one was for how to force the missing literal right which term should you use to force the missing literal and also to duplicate the terms so that you can combine more so those are the two tricks that we have learned here in order to go from left hand side to the right hand side all right let's keep moving here that was 11 Let's see.
I'm going to go back all the way to kind of show you guys. Uh, let's see, close here. Right. So the 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 properties that we have approved so far, they are all laid out over here. This page is talking about property six all the way to property 11D. So we have proved all of them. They are just being uh, summarized on this slide. Let us move next to De Morgan's law. De Morgan's law involves, uh, De Morgan's law is about 12, 12D and in general 13. So let's talk about De Morgan's law. You start off with left hand side. What do you have? You have X or Y or Z or a bunch of input variables. If you are all of them and then you complement the result of oring, it is the same as individually complementing the variables and ending them later on. So I will capture 12 in a, in a sketch here. Oh, sorry. This is uh, nor. This is X, this is Y, this is Z, and so on. And that is the NOR gate there, right? Is the same as complement each input and put them through an AND gate. So the bubble signifies inversion. So what we are doing here is taking X, Y, Z and so on, inverting them first and then doing the AND. So this is invert, then AND. So De Morgan's law essentially says a NOR operation is the same as inverting the inputs first and then doing the AND operation between them. Uh, and you know De Morgan's law uh, can be pr proved using uh, Venn diagrams. They can also be proved using truth table perfect induction method. Um, so uh, you can start off with a two variable De Morgan's law and prove it. And if you go to a, a higher number of variables, uh, it will hold the property. This is also saying this. If you take X and complement and you take AND and complement, that's like the dual, right? So when you are taking a look at the dual of what is inside the parentheses, it is actually the same as inverting the dual. That's another way of looking at De Morgan's law. And if you have 12, you also have 12t. All the pluses are replaced with ands. The complement remains as is. All the complements are uh, x complement, y complement. Those are, again, literals are left unchanged. And the pluses are replaced with ors. So this is saying, this is this, right? For, for 12d, you can say nand is the same as invert inputs then you are them 
which you can uh, sketch up this way, right? One, two, two input NAND is the same as invert the inputs and put them through a OR gate. Now, if you combine 12 and 12D, you can write one very generic Boolean algebra property, which is property number 13, which says that if you have a particular logic expression, some function which has x1, x2, xn, so these are all n binary variables, and you have a 0, 1, and you have odds and ands, and if you complement that, it is the same as the same function with x1 replaced with x1 complement, x2 replaced with x2 complement, xn replaced with xn complement, ones, zeros replaced with ones, ones replaced with zeros, ors replaced with ands, ands replaced with ors. So if you take a function and complement it, you get exactly the, the flipped version of it on the right hand side. All you have to do is flip all the literals, flip the ones into zeros, zeros into ones, ands into ors, ors into ands. So that is property number 13 is essentially a, a, a combination of 12 and 12D in a more generic sense. This applies to all the, all the functions f in general, any function, any logic uh, expression. All right. Property number 16 and 17 are essentially the last two properties uh, that are involved. And we have a few minutes remaining. So I'm going to try to prove them so that we don't have to start uh, with Boolean algebra proofs next. Let's see prove 16. The property number 16 is x or y ended with x complement or z and the property says it is the same as x and z or x complement and y. What I'll do is I'll start with my left hand side which is I'll use the distributive property x and x complement, uh, x and z, y and y x complement, y and z. So I've got four terms here. That will go to zero. That will remain as is. I will have x complement or y and y complement or z. Now, here is the trick. x and z, x and z. Okay, so I'm there x complement y, x complement y. I'm there. So I need to do, uh, Alan just treat it as property number 14 and 15. There is a, there is a, the, the numbers have been missed. Let's combine, uh, let's come back to this. Now if you see on the left hand side, you have uh, just ignored the zero because it doesn't count anymore. You have three terms essentially, x and z, x complement and y, and y and z. And if you can see on the right hand side here, you match one of them here, you match two of them here. So you essentially have to manipulate the left hand side in order to get rid of this y and z term. And because you want to get rid of this term, I'm going to force the missing literal on that term. Force missing literal on the term that needs to be eliminated. So what do you have? X and Z remains as is, X or complement Y remains as is. I have X or X complement ended with y and z. So I can expand now. x 
वाई जी और एक्स कॉम्प्लीमेंट वाई जी सो एसेंशली दैट टर्म हैज बिकम दैट टर्म इज नाउ टू टर्म्स नाउ लेट्स ट्राई टू लुक एट दिस वॉट कैन आई कंबाइन विथ वॉट वन I can combine these two guys. What is that going to be? I can pull out an x and z. I get one or y, which is x and z and one, which is x and z. Then similarly, I can combine these two guys. there's a x complement and y that is common to both of them one or z which is simply x complement or y so by combining those two you have got x plus complement y which is the right hand side so the the trick over here was to identify which term we needed gone then we force the missing literal on to that term and then that allowed us to combine terms in a better manner so i hope that was uh, helpful there let's see Uh, if I have proved sixteen, sixteen uh, D, also you can prove using uh, now any one of those ways. How? What would you do for sixteen D? I hope that you are able to see sixteen D on your screen. What would you do for sixteen D? Well, if I were doing this on the right hand side, I have something that I can uh, distribute. So I would consider the right hand side. Uh, I would do a foil. so i would expand this into four terms and then depending on which terms i need to i need to eliminate i will use the tricks that i learnt earlier like for example forcing the missing literal on the term that i want eliminated to go back to the left hand side but i would start with the right hand side for 16d now coming to the consensus theorem which is 17 and 17d this is a property that is uh, that has uh three variables um and if you look at 17d we have actually proved it just now 17d was x and y y and z x complement and z is the same as x and y x complement and z where did we you see this just now we saw this while we were going from these three to that so it was part of the proof that we did during 16 so when we were proving 16 we actually so if you see this uh, these three terms down to two those those terms that's actually property 17 um there's a question uh, on the chat box let's see for 16 when we expand the left hand side why do we get y let's see expand the y Uh, I'm not sure which uh, step are you referring to. Oh, feel free to uh, use your mic to um, you know uh, talk about which step you see a mistake in. Well, Professor, I'm thinking about the first line about the expansion that X. x and x bar plus x and z plus yeah. y and z x bar and oh. y and z and i think it should be a plus yes, instead yes, of yes. A, yeah. you're right that's a that's that's uh, that's a mistake on my part thank you for catching that all right uh, so that's 16 and as as i mentioned uh, these three terms going to those two terms the blue pink and yellow going to blue and uh, pink 
though that's property 17. So we have actually, while proving 16, we have also proved uh, 17. And because we have proved 17, we have kind of proved 17D because of principle of duality. Uh, so I would consider all the proofs at this point uh, to be complete. Um, and in all of this, my goal was, if I go back all the way, for you to be very comfortable with these three skills. Perfect induction or the truth table method, the the use of Venn diagrams and the use of other Boolean properties to prove other Boolean properties. Um, now in the, in the next class, when we meet, uh, we will go over some examples uh, of uh, some simplification, some proofs and so on, uh, not proofs, some simplification, uh, some manipulation, um, which can be quite interesting and also very confusing. The biggest problem that uh, we have with Boolean algebra is when you start to simplify things, you do not know exactly when to stop. Like there, there is no uh, structured way to figure out this is the best I can do in terms of simplification and I should be able to stop now, uh, which kind of creates uh, the, the, the confusion so we'll do some examples in the next class to go uh, to complete our conversation about Boolean algebra. Uh, let me stop recording.